The system monitor is probably the most important of the three here. Now, this is one of these cases of um, do as I say, not as I do. I very often forget to run this. But the system monitor is going to show you um, everything that's going on. So you can see here that I, I ran the RTI ID MDI. That was a new IDE and it ran the start window being the start window for our application. Now, one of the main reasons why this is important to run is when you're programming, if you accidentally put one of your applications into an infinite loop, for instance, so you might have a bit of code that says start program, um, you know, sign variable a equals zero, and a little bit later down you say if, um, if a equals zero, restart the program, you're gonna get yourself into an infinite loop. In here, you can stop that process gracefully and carry on with open insights if you haven't got that running and you're in that infinite loop in a in a test uh, run situation then you're going to have to aggressively close down the engine or go into the taskbar and aggressively close down open insight so my advice would be to keep the system monitor open while you're developing in addition under here there is a tcl which is a command line as a command line assistant and this enables you to list bits and pieces to um, delete rows, look at tables and all of that type of thing. So if you like doing things at the command line, then obviously you know, you've got the ability to, to do that. The development menu is more about managing development teams or if you are running on two machines, maybe one at home and one at work, then this enables you to check in and check out entities. It enables you to deploy your applications using the runtime deployment kit. So you can create deployment definitions and we'll probably look at that a bit later. It also enables you to reset the history log and to rebuild system indexes and synchronize bits and pieces. You've also got preferences. Now of this menu, I'm going to look at two things. The first is the preferences. Now I've just changed back to my, my view. So entities using preferences rather than the need of evaluation. This is the one that I, I usually use because it gives you all of the information. Now in here, if I go into the little drop down, I can jump around the repository very quickly and easy. So I can jump to open insight forms. I could then jump to menus. So this is a nice way of finding your way around the repository quickly and easily. But the list is quite long. Now in here, um, there's a number of bits and pieces you're never going to use. Like I'm never going to use Lotus Media Tools or the Smart Suite Tools. So what I can do is I can go into the preferences. I can find those items that I want, so I'll remove the Lotus ones, click OK, and then when I go back into that drop down list, you can see that they're no longer listed in here. So that's quite a nice way of just managing the list in here. The other area that I want to have a look at is checking in and checking out entities. Um, obviously, you need to check one out before you check one in, so we use the second of the menus. We'll do a new checkout. And in this particular instance, I want to copy the entities and I want to lock them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check them out to my desktop into that folder. And if I click on entities, I can go and select a form. And this particular form I'm going to check out is the invoice entry. So I'll have that. And one of the really lovely things in here is I can click on uses and I can immediately see that I'm using the invoices table and the events, I've got a create event, I've got three options events, I've got a number of click events, some images, etc. Now I can go ahead and check these out as well if I want to, I don't in this instance, but one of the really nice things this is doing is it's telling me that if I make a change to this window, I might be affecting all of these other entities. Now you might have a store procedure that is being used by several forms, and if you make a change to the store procedure to affect one form, you might be affecting a number of other forms which you might not want to. So you make your changes, you deploy your application, and you wait the phone, for the phone to ring, for the users to ring up and say, hey, this used to work this way and now it's broken. Using this feature, so you can see what you're going to impact on, this is like the impact analysis, then you can turn around and say, okay, well, maybe I might not make that change, I'll do it a different way, and you can be in control rather than waiting for the phone to ring by your users, which is something you never want to happen. So we just go ahead and we check out that entity. We'll click OK. We'll put a description in here, so MDP checkout. You'd normally put something a little bit more descriptive in there. And you've also got the ability to put a description in here. So uh, check out for my quick start guide video. And we'll just OK that. 
and click OK to check out that particular entity. Right now, if we go into the view and our entities that are checked out, so as a, um, a team leader, you might go in there and you want to see what entities your team have got checked out, then you can see in here that I've now got my invoice entry um, entity logged out and if I double click that I can see that it's checked out when it was what time and date and who by I'm logged in as examples normally I'll be logged in as Martin so it will show my name there now in addition if we go into the um, using preferences our main view and I go to the forms and open up the forms and we come down which is a bit too far you can see here that my invoice entry now has a tick next to it as, as well Remember that we've opted to show flags, so what it's showing me is that it needs to be evaluated and also that it's been checked out. So again, um, a team leader can very quickly scan the repository and see all entities that are checked out, those that need to be evaluated. So this really keeps you in control of all of the entities within the repository. So that's pretty much the development um, menu, checking in, checking out, deploying, resetting entities and synchronizing things in your preferences. The last menu is the help menu. Now the help system in Open Insight is fantastic. If we just go to the contents and in here you have access to all of the help system within Open Insight. There are additional resources on the works area, so the forums etc. But this is one of the first places to look. Now for the topic of this particular video, if we go to the guide to application development and we go to the application manager and we just launch that, then in here you can see that you've got a, a view of it, you can see a lot of information about the display and then further down it will give you a number of other links. So we could link for to information about the menu bar, about the ribbon and if you remember I spoke about the buttons being able to change the order if you go into the side toolbar then you get a view of that side toolbar if you come down to the bottom you've got a note about customizing the side toolbar and if we click on that then you can go in and you can see the tool number and what button will be displayed so if you want to have your database manager first and your table builder second within the oinsight.ini file let's just run that back up again okay and you can see here I just moved this over a bit that I've opted for number one so I've got the database manager first number two is a table builder number three is a forms designer but then I skip the system editor and I go straight to run the user interface workspace and then number eight I've got the report builder so you can see how you can change this uh, this the order that the buttons are displayed very quickly and very easily so the help files within open insight are fantastic a lot of information and obviously that's backed up with the support services but that's one of the first places to to look the last area to look at is the status line now on the new IDE the status line isn't there yet but on this old IDE the status line displays information about the selected entity in the outline the entity type the owner name current view the entity's inheritance status and whether any flags have been set uh, and are then displayed in the uh, in the interface. So that's really it for the application manager at this point in time. We'll obviously be coming back to this as we go through the videos building our sample application. But that's it for this lesson and in the next one we'll look at creating our first application. So thank you very much for your time today and see you again very soon. Bye bye.